Salutations and welcome to the farm. Well, we are about two weeks into our barn quilt project here on the farm. It is the second week in July coming to a close. The first couple of weeks in July, we chose our winner for our barn quilt contest. If you didn't see that, I'll put the link here. And the winner is Chrissy from Along the River Homestead. And so we've been working this past couple of weeks, blocking out our pattern, figuring it out, getting it on paper so I can check a square twice, paint it once so I don't make any mistakes. You can see we've got our grid set up behind us with not only string line, but also with some painter's tape. And I've been coming out every morning and I'm trying to make sure that I can get one square a day done. Now this is an 8 by 8 pattern. It's going to take 64 days if I only do one square a day. So it's going to take a couple months to get this project done. But if you know me, you know I can't just do one square a day. So I've been coming out trying to knock out what I can. We've also had some rainy days, so there's days I have to do a little bit of catch up. If you see the barn quilt behind me here on the 1902 corn crib, I've already got some grays, some sunflower yellow, lemon yellow, and light teal. Today I'm going to be working on putting up some very crisp white as well as some dark teal. So I'm going to be peppering some pictures and some videos throughout this video today of what we've done over the last week with painting. And then I'll come back and we'll wrap up this video showing you what all I got accomplished today. So let's go. Yesterday, Papa Jim and I came down and we established the grid pattern for our barn quilt. Each string represents a section. There are eight sections across and two boards will equal one section down. So we will have eight across, eight down for a total of 64 squares for our barn quilt and each square will be a ten and a half inch square. So overall, when this is done, this will be a seven foot by seven foot barn quilt. Well, it's July 12 and here we are 12 days into our barn quilt design painting. We have a beautiful lemon yellow, sunflower yellow, and a light teal and some gray.
putting in these lines here where the boards aren't flat is probably one of the most challenging parts of painting the side of this corn crib other than climbing up on the ladder. Climbing up on the ladder for me is quite the challenge. I've uh, just been painting where I can safely reach and I'm saving the higher parts for when my husband is home in case I fall or in case I need some help. But I am doing the ones where I only have to go up a couple rungs up on the ladder and down where I can stand and get these. So let's finish this one. They said I'd never use geometry. Geometry is used in almost every aspect, well actually every aspect of painting a barn quilt. You have 45 degree angles, you have 90 degree angles. Sometimes you have all kinds of crazy angles that you have to work into your pattern. I'm lucky that this pattern just has squares and also squares that are in half. So I'm able to use this frog tape to mark off my pattern. I should have invested in stock and frog tape before I started this project because you do have to tape off every section as you paint it so you get nice crisp lines. I've got my frog tape up and if you'll notice I'm going to paint across and away from the tape. These boards have a lot of grooves in them from the natural grain and if I paint this way into the tape I'm going to have seepage underneath the tape. But if I brush across and away I'm able to get those nice crisp sharp lines without having paint seep underneath. Just like that. I love that I chose to paint directly onto the corn crib. It shows the character of the wood. There's knot holes. There's places where animals have chewed on it and worn it down and I just think it has a lot of character. Up close you may notice the imperfections but when you stand back you really get to see the beauty. Isn't it like that with people? Their flaws and their scars, that's what made them who they are. You have to appreciate it for what it is. Don't focus on the negative. Think about all the positives that got them to where they are today. Think of the positives that got this corn crib, 119 years old, to where it is today. That's why we're kind of celebrating it with this beautiful barn quilt. And you see I have a half diagonal here. And I'm going to do a half diagonal here. That's going to create a pinwheel effect when we're all done. I make funny faces when I paint. I don't know. Maybe I do. It's hard to smile all the time when you're on camera. You forget what you're doing. And I know I'm going, uh, <laughs> painting like this. Oh... I like to have music on when I'm doing project. Not today. Today I have the natural music of the beautiful songbirds here in the Midwest. Can you hear them? Now some of you may ask, Country Mama, why are you jumping around and going from one row to the next and not just completing things as you go? The way this tape is, the way we have it set up, it's either on one side or the other of one of our chalk lines. So I have to skip rows because on some of them the paint's on the inside and I'm going to have a gap. So the way we have it set up right now, out of eight rows, the vertical rows, I'm able to work on anything on rows one, three, five, and seven, all of the odd rows. Once the odd rows are done, we will remove all of this tape and we'll set it up again so that it allows us full access to the even rows, two, four, six, and eight. And then we will just come back and we'll paint everything as we go and eventually we'll end up with the full barn quilt. And there we go. All of the white for row seven and row five are done. Now I just need to move on to rows three and one. I'm not gonna record those. And then I'll bring you back when we're going to work on our dark teal today. 
Well, you know, I was going to introduce our fourth color, that dark teal blue color today, but I think I'm going to have you wait and tune in next week to see how that's going to bring so much more vibrance to this beautiful barn quilt. But look at all of the white that I got done today. So we have white, we have the light teal, we have the lemony yellow right about here, and we have the sunflower yellow right here. And so all of those, oh, and we have the gray. There's gray. So all of that's gonna start playing together to really make this barn quilt just really come to life. So we're done now with week one. Come back and join me for week two as we add more colors to this barn quilt. I'm gonna show you the colors that we're gonna be having on this barn quilt. Uh, I'm not going to show you the bucket for the white, and I'm not going to show you the bucket for the gray, but I am going to show you my little sample paint cans that I got to do the colors. So if you're thinking about doing a project like this, but you're worried about the expense, my little paint samples were only about $6 for the sample each, so $24 for my colors that are going to go up on this barn quilt this time. So that's really not a bad investment considering the wood's already here. So let's go take a look at those colors. Our dark Sunflower Yellow is called Sense of Wonder by Valspar. The light yellow that we started painting, very first color we put up on our barn quilt, Backlit Lemon. It is the lighter of the two yellows. Our dark teal blue that we will be introducing next week is called Amazing Sky by Valspar. And the final color that we have for our barn quilt, this was the first teal that we put up. It's our light teal. It's called Utopia Beckons. Now you may notice that these are Valspar samples and it says interior latex satin. That's okay. We're going to be okay. I will probably be painting a um, varnish over this to give it some protection, some polyurethane. So I think we'll be okay and we want it to age. We want it to look like it's been here forever. So it'll be crisp and beautiful the first couple years and then as it ages, it will look like it's been on this corn crib for its entire life. Okay, guys. So that's it from the farm today. Thank you for coming out and painting with me here on this barn quilt. Be sure to go on over to Along the River Homestead. Say hello to Chrissy. Tell her that Country Mama Musing sent you. Let her know that you're watching her barn quilt go up. Join me again. We're going to be doing another update next week, and I will show you all of the steps that we've taken to continue working on this barn quilt. Until then, take care of yourself, take care of each other, have a blessed day, and we will see you next time here on the farm.